Uh, um, I am glad to present to you Francesca Castella, who will talk on Iwasawa theory for GL2, cross GL2 and diagonal cycles uh, from University of California, Santa Barbara. Okay. Well, thanks uh, very much for the introduction and the invitation to speak. As everyone here, uh, I wish we could all be uh, meeting in Buenos Aires, but I will have to wait for another location, I guess. Okay, so this is uh, the title of my talk. And uh, oh, I, I'm not monitoring the chat. So uh, if, uh, if anyone is and there is any question, maybe they could let me know. And otherwise you can just mute yourself and ask if, if you have any questions. Uh, let's see if I can scroll this. Okay. So here's a plan for, for my talk. Uh, so let me begin by, by telling you the setup. The setup. So we take G and H, two new forms uh, of weights, K sub G, K sub H, and I order them so that G is the one of uh, larger weight. Uh, I'm gonna take K an imaginary quadratic field and take Psi to be a Hege character for K uh, of infinity type one minus K for some even integer K at least two. And I wanna assume this condition on the central character. I want the central character of Psi to be uh, the inverse of the products of uh, the eleven typos of G and H. Okay, so the triple product will be uh, will have trivial central character. And then I take a prime P, which is a, a good prime, and I assume that it's a prime split in this imaginary quadratic field. And then uh, I look at this at this periodic representation of the absolute Galois group of K. I take the tensor product of uh, the Galois representations of G and H. I take the twist by these characters and now this, this product will have uh, trivial neven typos, trivial central character. And then I take this uh, twist by a power of the psychotomic character that, made, that makes this whole tensor product uh, Kummer self dual. Okay, so the goal for this talk is to study the arithmetic of, of, of this representation, which by the way, uh, I've made these choices, is, is going to be self dual. Okay, and by arithmetic, what I mean more precisely is uh, things along the lines of the block other conjecture for this representation, <clears throat> or uh, it was our theory, which in this conjugate self dual situation is the most natural. Uh, it was our theory to, to consider is the, the one of anti economic type. So this is the goal. And uh, as probably we all know here, one of the main tools we have available for studying. Uh, this type of problems for, for a given periodic representation is uh, the, or the, are the, the method of Euler systems. So having Euler systems uh, for this would, would allow us to, to say something about these problems. Okay, so let me next say, uh, remind uh, you of the, the definition of anti-sylomic Euler systems, which is slightly different than the one you can find, for example, in, in Rubin's book. Okay, so in this setting, uh, one needs a slightly uh, different theory. Okay, so more generally for now, uh, for this slide, let's say V to be a conjugate of dual uh, representation of GK and ramified upside some kind of prime sigma. I assume that V is in sigma. And I will denote by S the set of all <coughs> uh, products of primes Q, uh, not in S, so not in sigma, so primes Q at which V is unramified, and I allow Q to be P. Okay, and the important thing is that I want these primes all to be split in K. And then in, in recent work, uh, uh, JHF, Nekovar, and Skinner develop a, a general theory of anti systems that provides an anti counterpart of uh, many of the results you can find in, in Rubin's uh, Red Book. Okay, so in, in their uh, theory, an anti system for V is gonna be, as, as in the classical theory of the system, a collection of cohomology classes, uh, <clears throat> one for each N, uh, where k of n is the ring class field of conductor n, n is running over all these products of primes uh, in the set s. And uh, these classes are integral, okay? So uh, they live in a fixed lattice t inside v, which uh, is gk stable and, and doesn't depend on n. And the defining property is that uh, as we consider these classes for different conductors, they should satisfy some non-compatibility relations. Okay, so more precisely, if I take uh, one of these primes Q and uh, an integer N so that both N and N times Q, uh, we have classes defined in, in those conductors, 
if I go restrict from conductor NQ down to N, uh, this class CNQ, I get uh, one Q, in the case of Q divides N or Q divides P, I just get the class downstairs. And otherwise, I get also the class downstairs, but modified by certain polynomial in the uh, geometric Frobenius. Okay, so this P of Q is, is the essentially a characteristic polynomial of geometric Frobenius acting on the conjugate of, of V. And this polynomial applied to Frobenius uh, as an element of the Gala group of this extension uh, acting on CN, it gives us the, the second non compatibility relation. Okay, so the first, the first relation uh, for Q equal to P uh, will tell us in particular that if we let N to be a, an increasing sequence of powers of P, P to the K for increasing K, uh, this will be universal norms in this, in this uh, infinite tower. Okay, and that's the reason why uh, using these systems, we will be able to uh, say something about Iwasawa theory. On the other hand, these so-called tame non relations, when we look at co-restriction, when we drop a prime Q, which is different from P from, from the conductor, these tame, these tame non relations will be the ones that uh, via uh, generalization of Kolibagin's arguments will allow us to uh, bound Selmer groups in, in good uh, circumstances where uh, we have another system which is non-trivial and some other conditions like a big image hypothesis holds. Okay, but that's the, the general definition. And uh, in recent work, uh, as I said, Jechev, Nekovar, and Skinner uh, develop a, a counterpart of, of uh, Kolibagin's and Rubin's results in, in this situation. Okay, and what they develop in, in uh, practice is uh, what, one could be, what one could view as a machinery taking as input uh, a non-trivial OLE system in, as, as I just introduced, okay? So uh, non-trivial in the sense that the base class, uh, at least one of these classes is non-zero. Uh, if you get that as input, then uh, the theory provides bounds on thermal groups. Okay, and the bounds that, they, that the theory provides, they are not readily usable okay? in, in uh, the, the bound that one gets is in terms of certain index attached to C sub one. Okay, but then with further work, one can uh, use this bound to, to get uh, bounds more in the lines as predicted by conjectures as the one I was mentioning before. Okay, so the, the most basic example and, and uh, <clears throat> classical one of, of such Euler system will be coming from Hegner points and, and more generally cycles. Okay, so this example goes back to work on Kolibagin in, in for Hegner points and uh, Kolibagin, Logachev, and, and Nekovar in, in higher dimensional cases. So, uh, so if G is a weight uh, KG mu form, certain event types, and psi is a finite order character, again, with this condition on the central character, so that uh, the twist is going to be self dual, then Hegner points and cycles would provide one instance of uh, such anti psychodomic order system. Okay, where now the relevant representation would be the usual representation attached to G twist by this uh, character. So that again, this is a, a trivial center character. And then we take the appropriate uh, psychotomic twist to make uh, the representation con conjugate self dual. Okay, in this case, the non triviality of, of this system, uh, this is a typo here, uh, non trivial, should say. Uh, uh, this happens precisely when the order of vanishing at, at the center of this of this cell function is is precisely one by thanks to the gross Sergei formula. Okay, so in particular, uh, if you apply their machinery to this example, uh, the theory recovers the the well-known results of of uh, in for uh, in terms of using Hegner points. Okay, and, and for this particular example, there is no much advantage between their theory or, or Kolibagin's original arguments. But when one is interested in looking at higher dimensional analogs, uh, when B is higher dimensional, like in our case, where it's of the before, uh, their theory uh, happens to be much more robust. Okay? If, if one naively extends, tries to extend Kolibagin's argument to higher dimensional situations, one quickly runs into technical difficulties, which their, their theory uh, seems to overcome. Okay, so our main result will be uh, uh, constructing an OLE system for the 
four dimensional representation I introduced at the beginning. Okay, so before I do that, are there any questions so, so far? No questions so far. Thank you. Okay, so <clears throat> now I can state the main result. Okay, so it's John Ward with Alonso and, and Rivero. So I, I remind you again, uh, the representation we're looking at is this uh, conjugate absolute twist of, of uh, this uh, ranking server convolution. And now uh, we need to make some further hypotheses. So G and H, we assume them to be P-ordinary. P, uh, I think I already assumed it before, but uh, P splits in K. And uh, also uh, I assume here that, that P doesn't divide the class now. Although as I'm gonna say, this should, uh, we put it here largely for simplicity. Okay, and then Psi P, okay, so I think I didn't say it, but Psi P was, so Psi is a character, but we know that there is, one can attach P adic avatars to the characters, just as for modular forms, we have a lot of presentations. So for characters, we get a one dimensional character of the Galo group. That's what I denote Psi sub P. So we assume that this is non Eisenstein and P distinguished. Okay, so this means that P splits in K. So when I evaluate this at one of the branch of P and the other, I get different values, modulo P, okay, that would be this condition. And P distinguished means that this distinction is actually happening also locally at P. Okay. So then under this hypothesis, we can produce uh, an antistereotomic college system for this uh, representation. Okay, so we have a system of cohomology classes, one uh, on condu of conductor N for every N in this set. And as we change the conductor to satisfy the, the non-compatibility relations I stated earlier. Okay, and some uh, notes about this. So as I already mentioned, this condition of P on dividing the class number, uh, it's, it's put in the preprint uh, that, he, that we put on archive like a month ago, but it should be easily removable. It would just make, uh, yeah, it would cause some, some nuisances that, that uh, we'll, we'll probably take care of uh, before uh, in a subsequent revision. Okay, but uh, as it extends now, uh, we have these hypotheses. And uh, we also construct classes which are indexed by uh, conductors supported at ranks in Earth in K, but uh, those, even though we have them, we in the applications, we're not going to make use of them. Okay, so now equipped with this all system, we can uh, feed it into the machinery of, of uh, antiatomic all systems and, and get bound to thermal groups. So uh, let me next state some of the applications that we can draw from, from the existence of, of this all system. Okay, plus uh, this extra work to, to relate there, the bounds that one gets from the machinery to something uh, more, more uh, aligned with, with the expectations. Okay, so the non-triviality of, of this other system, it's uh, as usual, is, de is detected by the, is controlled by the non-managing of this class. Okay, so we have the class of conductor one, that means it's class defined over the Hilbert class field of K. We can restrict that down to K and whether this class vanishes or not is what the, uh, it was con it what, is what controls uh, the vanishing or not of the other system, the non-triviality or not. Okay, so if this has a big image in a sense that we can give sufficient conditions that uh, for which this, this big image hypothesis holds, then uh, if this class is non-trivial, then we can deduce that the block out of Selmer group has rank one. Okay, so here, this is my relation for the block out of Selman group. Okay, so some remarks. So if we make this uh, local root number hypothesis, uh, okay, so this epsilon L is, if you want, the, the epsilon factor of the Weidelin representation attached to this uh, representation restricted to a decomposition group at L. So if you assume that this, all these local root numbers are plus one for the Ls that divide this, this LCM, then the the root number in the in the L function for this for this representation will be uh, determined completely by the sign at infinity. So that will depend on the relative position of, of the different weights involved. Okay, so if we are in this range, in the so-called balance range, where uh, none of the weights is bigger than the sum of the other two, uh, then after 
conjectures of Kuros and Kutla, we expect that this non-triviality should be uh, happening precisely when the L function vanishes to order precisely one at the center. Okay, so this, this weight condition will force the sign in the functional equation to be minus one. So we have uh, automatic vanishing and a generalization of the gross idea formula conjectured by Gross and Kudla predicts that uh, uh, this, this anti-variety would be uh, happening precisely when we are in a different one. Okay, so involving here is also the, the injectivity of the average Jacobi mass. Okay, the, the gross Kudla formula, the gross Kudla conjecture would involve uh, some class in the Chow group. Okay, so, so to go from the Chow, so that's, the normalizing of that class in the Chow group would be controlled by this normalizing of the first derivative. To go from that to this summer class, one needs injectivity of the average Jacobi mass. Okay, in the case of weight 2 to 2, uh, there is evidence for this conjecture due to Yuan and Chang. Okay, so, uh, so this image would uh, suggest is that when we can view this first corollary as provided some par providing some partial progress towards uh, the block carrier conjecture in, in an eighty grand one. Okay, we expect that uh, if this vanishes to order one, then uh, we have thermal rank one. Okay, but this is conditional on on, uh, on this injectivity. Okay, the situation is better in an eighty grand zero. Okay, so a second corollary is the following. As, I, as before, assume that B has big image. Uh, we make the same root number hypothesis as before, but now we change the sign at infinity. Okay, so now K has a dominant weight and that will force the sign in the functional equation to be plus one. Okay, so we expect now uh, systematic non-vanishing for these central values. Okay, in that case, we can show that if this central value doesn't vanish, then the block carrier solomon group is trivial. And therefore, uh, it gives us instances of, of the block carrier conjecture for this uh, representation in analytic rank zero. Okay. So uh, as I already mentioned, this, this uh, root number hypothesis plays ourselves in a situation where uh, this function has sign plus one. So this, this is assumption here should be, should hold genetically. And then uh, under a stronger big image hypothesis, not only we can prove vanishing of this element group, one can also look at the element group with uh, uh, p divisible coefficients. Okay, so we fix a lattice T in our B, we look at this V mod T, which is something like the P torsion of an elliptic curve, some rank four analog of that. So in that case, this would be a finite group uh, and we can bound its size in terms of the PR evaluation of this central value uh, made algebraic. Okay. And there is a, a third application I wanna mention now to Iwasawa theory since it appears in the title. But for that, I first need to talk about uh, the adical functions, the, the relevant one in this feature. Okay, so I'm gonna take F infinity, uh, which quite, uh, so for, this pur for the purpose of this talk, we can just think of it as being a uh, family, an infinite family of, of uh, modular forms parameterized by weight, one for each K. And it's a theta family passing through, through the theta series attached to our character psi. Okay, so each of these forms in the family will be itself a theta series. Uh, the one of index by k prime will have k prime, weight k prime. And when we take k prime to be k, which was the weight of uh, theta psi, we recover the psi we started with. Okay, so just here a family passing through, through our uh, theta series. And then uh, Ming Lung Xie in recent work, uh, generalizing and refining earlier work by Harry Skudla and, and Darmon Roger, the, they have constructed the square root periodical function. Okay, so this is an element in, in lambda, which uh, we can think of as just being a one variable power series ring uh, with coefficient in CP. And uh, it's a square uh, interpolates the center of values that we were seeing before. Okay, so when we specialize at any K in this, uh, and balance range where k prime is, is the dominant weight. And we square that, we get uh, this L value, this central L value made algebraic, and then up to a non-zero constant, which is uh, made in CS work uh, quite explicit by making a, a very careful choice of the test vectors. Okay, and under this root number hypothesis that has already appeared a number of times, 
uh, this will have sign plus one at the center in the functional equation. So, so we expect these cell values to be generically non-zero. And therefore, this periodical function uh, should be not the zero element in the Iwasawa algebra. Okay, so there should be an analog of what Sal's result in this setting, uh, proving this kind of statement, but uh, uh, that's not known uh, as of today. Okay, so, so now uh, with this periodical function, we can formulate an Iwasawa main conjecture. Okay, so on the algebraic side, one can follow Greenberg's uh, general recipe, okay, when this, this representation V satisfies uh, what Greenberg calls the, the, the Panchiskin condition, which uh, is enough uh, for you to define the right local conditions at the primes above P to define a thermal group that one can expect to relate uh, to a periodical function. Okay, so uh, one can define a Greenberg thermal group for this, for this module, and conjecturally, under those uh, true number hypothesis I had before, this should be lambda torsion and its characteristic ideal or rather the characteristic ideal of its Pontryagin dual should be generated by, by this L function whose square interpolates L value. Okay, that would be the, the, the statement of Iwasawa's main conjecture for this representation over the anti-sigodomic CD extension. Okay, so now that, uh, so here K infinity is this variable in the anti-sigodomic CD extension, F infinity was the weight variable, but because F infinity was a family of CM forms, uh, in this uh, situation, there is an identification between uh, this uh, abelian variable, vari variable coming from, from K infinity and this weight variable in the heat family. Okay, and the third corollary of, of our uh, results is that under this uh, hypothesis, if V again has weak image, then we can show that this element group is lambda contortion as expected. And uh, we can't quite get the predicted equality in characteristic ideals, but uh, we can get a, an upper bound. Okay, so we can show that the characteristic ideal of the Pontryagin dual divides uh, uh, the square of this periodical function, and we have to invert p. Okay, that's because uh, in deducing this corollary uh, from from other systems, one gets a divisibility towards a different main conjecture, which, as I said, would be in terms of this. Uh, index of, of a class coming from the from the system and then one needs to do some some work to go from that to, to this one and and in doing that transition uh, we lose control of, of our powers of px and sets okay so these are the main this is the main result and, and uh, the main applications and I have like 10 minutes left so what I would like to do next is give a, a brief outline of the construction of the oil system. Okay, and for simplicity, I'm gonna uh, focus on the case of weight two, two, two. Okay, so G and H will now have weight two and psi uh, infinity type minus one, zero. Okay, so also corresponding to a form of, of weight two. Okay, that will make the, the, the setup simpler. Okay, so the key, the key idea is to look at uh, the following intermediate modular curve. Okay, so we have our N, this capital N was coming from the levels of the three forms involved. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add auxiliary levels. Okay, we're gonna produce a class of conductor N for every N. So we need to add this data of this uh, of N at, at, in the, into the picture. And, and the way it will arise is by adding it to the level of you know, modular curves. And uh, it's important to consider these, these particular levels. Okay, so in terms of moduli, uh, this would parameterize uh, pairs or triples rather, consisting of elliptic curves together with a point of exact order n, and then a cyclic subgroup of order n n square, which contains this point. Okay, and then we let that, that delta sub n, delta sub n, be the image of the diagonal embedding of one copy of, of y n into the triple product. Okay, and we find. Uh, this CGHN diagonal to be the image under the other Jacobi map of this delta n. Okay, so to be entirely precise, one needs to modify this class to make it null homologous, so it become it belongs to the source of the other Jacobi map. But roughly, uh, this is what one does. Okay, one takes the other Jacobi of this diagonal cycle. Okay, and the other Jacobi will take us to H one of this 
uh, uh, middle et al cohomology of this threefold, okay, with coefficients in ZB2. But then by, by the Kuhn decomposition, we can project to the 111 component, okay, that will take us to uh, H1 Galois cohomology of Q for this triple tensor product. And then in the second and third factors, I will just project to the isotypic components for G and H. Okay, so that takes us uh, to the Galois representation attached to these forms. And then I haven't done anything yet in the first factor. Okay, so if I were to further project to the isotypic component for the theta series of psi, then I would just, this construction would just give us uh, a class over Q attached to the triple of modular forms uh, psi, G, and H. Okay, but that's not what we're gonna do. We want, uh, we want to produce classes not over Q, but over K of N. Okay, so what we're gonna do is, in the last step, we're gonna massage this, uh, this module uh, to be able to uh, turn these classes defined over Q into classes now defined over abelian extensions of K. Okay, and the way we're gonna do that is by using some Hecke theory. Okay, so there is a proposition that uh, generalizing a, a construction of play level serves that goes roughly as follows. Okay, so we let lambda n, lambda n be this uh, group ring uh, of k n over k, and probably it should be taken, yeah, I want this ring to be local, so uh, really what we take is uh, the Gala group of the maximal p extension uh, of k n. Okay, so then one can produce a family of isomorphisms between uh, these two modules. Okay, so on the left-hand side, we have this, this uh, H1 et al of this model curve where we have added N to the level. This has an action of, of a KK algebra that then denoted by this at N. And using the character Psi, uh, one can define some maps from the Hecke algebra to this lambda N. And uh, one can make this, uh, this uh, choice and, and the condition that Psi was non Eisenstein and P distinguished that I had in the, in, the, in the statement of the main theorem to make this module to be uh, uh, of rank two over, over ZP. Okay, and and uh, then show this isomorphism on this with an induced representation. Okay, so what, what ends up happening is that one shows that the model, of the, the model on the left is universal uh, for twists by, of Psi by ring class character of conductor uh, dividing n. Okay, and that's how one draws this isomorphism. But one wants to do that integrally, so there is some uh, delicate uh, analysis that goes into this. Okay, so one can draw these isomorphisms, and moreover, uh, one can make them compatible for varying m. Okay, so on the right-hand side, we have this norm map on the induced representation, and on the left-hand side, there will be some maps that will make this diagram commutative. Okay, and now once we have this, uh, we can define our classes. We're going to take the class at level n in, in our system to be the image of this diagonal class I had before. Uh, I view it in this module where I introduce this uh, lambda n, which now by the isomorphism is isomorphic to this induced. And now by Shapiro's lemma, uh, I can view this as a class defined over kn. Okay, so that gives us the classes. And next, we want to understand, uh, we want to prove these norm compatibilities I had before. What happens when we take the class at level n q and I correspond down to n? I should see some polynomial of Frobenius uh, appearing in, in that process. Okay, and this commutativity will translate uh, that into a, a, calc uh, a calculation involving these norm maps. And these are defined in terms of degeneracy maps on the model curves. Okay, so this model curve has higher level than this one. And there are different degeneracy maps that one can take to go from one to the other. So uh, it boils down to tracing uh, uh, down these classes via different degeneracy maps and making uh, the appropriate adjustments to, to get things with expected norm relations. Okay, so that's uh, one of the main results in, in, in this work. Okay, so what we can show is the following. So if Q is uh, different from P, uh, find that's pleasing K, so say as yes, frac Q, frac Q bar, then uh, after four or five pages of, of uh, calculation with degeneracy maps, which are not terribly difficult, uh, we get this, this uh, same norm relation. Okay, the class at level n q restricted down to level n. It recovers the class at level n affected by this expression, which I write down here, 
uh, precisely what what we get. And uh, this enough this enough to get the the ten run relations because even though this is not uh, the expression we had on the nose, it's congruent to it modulo q minus one. Okay, and then uh, uh, if you look at in Rubin's book, you can find a, a little lemma where uh, he shows that if you have a system of classes that is fine, the norm the right norm relations up to uh, something congruent uh, uh, to the expected thing modulo q minus one, you can then massage the, the classes again to get things, uh, to get classes with the expected norm relations. Okay, so this uh, will give rise to the norm relations and as in the definition I had before of antisatomic order systems. This will give us the 10 norm relations for primes different from Q. There was also the case of Q dividing N, uh, which is simpler, and the case Q equal to P, which is uh, simpler, but not automatic. And uh, but in that case, we can easily deduce that from these wild norm relations, from uh, the fact that these classes that uh, we attach to this character Psi, they form along Hida families. Okay, so work of Darmon Roger and Bertolini Seveso Benelucci uh, show that these that these classes they form in Hida families and that easily give uh, the one norm relations. Okay, so uh, in the remaining uh, two minutes or so, I would like to give uh, another application uh, of this whole system that is, is work in progress. Okay, so that will be the case when uh, G now we take G to be equal to H. Okay, so, so this case was excluded by the previous uh, arithmetic applications because that image, that big image hypothesis we needed uh, uh, doesn't hold in this case. Okay, but uh, still we would like to, so we cannot apply uh, this to study uh, the, the tensor product of G with G, but uh, in that case, we know that there is a decomposition uh, in, in, as a direct sum we get seam square. So we can try to use that to study the, the antistomic was our theory for seam square instead. So that's the, the goal of this, of this project. Okay, so in this uh, uh, follow-up uh, project, we, we want to take G to be H uh, of weight K bigger than K over two. K is the infinity type of, or one minus K is infinity type of psi. In that case, we have this uh, well-known decomposition of the tensor product of uh, PG with itself, and we get the determinant and uh, seam square. And now uh, our classes, which leave, uh, which are all the systems for, for this class, we can project them to the second summon, and we get an antisomical system for, for this. Okay, and there is some work to do here because the, the other factors that one gets in the compatibilities uh, are for this representation rather for the degree three man, but still one can uh, arrange this. And uh, as I said, what we want to do in this uh, in this work in progress is now to study uh, the antisomic Iwasawa theory for steam square. Okay, so there will be again a grimmer selmer group, uh, similarly as before, and then its characteristic ideal should be generated by a square root periodical function, which is an analog in this antisatomic setting of the coach smith periodical function for the psychotomic variable. Okay, so this periodical function in the right has been constructed by work of Casacha and, and De Vera Piquero. It uh, building on, on some uh, special value formula uh, to Ichi, uh, due to Ichino uh, involving uh, Saito Kurokawa leaves. Okay, so the key, the key to, to get this application would be establishing uh, a factorization of periodical functions. Okay, so on the one hand, we have this square root periodical function for the triple product. Then we have this analog of Coach-Smith in the antisatomic setting. And now this factor in the middle is essentially an antisatomic catch periodical function. Okay, so remember that F infinity was a CM Hida family. And this is a square root uh, antisatomic catch. But now the this, this factorization is not a factorization one can prove directly by comparing the interpolation formula uh, of each of the factors, because in the range where we have an interpolation for this one, because of our root number hypothesis, the values interpolated by this factor and this one, uh, they all vanish. Okay, so this resemblance 
it's not exactly, but it's it reminiscent of the situation uh, faced by Gross and Dasgupta in their work on factorization of periodical functions. And our hope is that uh, we can use this factorization uh, to get to this to this uh, uh, relation between periodical functions. Okay, and what we'll go into this uh, uh, is a delicate comparison between uh, two oil, two different oil systems. Okay, so in the case of Gross, it was psychotomic units and elliptic units. In the case of Dasgupta, is valence on plot classes and uh, psychotomic units. In our case, it will be these uh, uh, classes coming from diagonal cycles and Hegner points or, or cycles. Okay, but uh, this is still work in progress. Okay, and that's all, all I wanted to say. So thanks, thanks very much for your attention. Are there questions for the speaker? Let me ask you a question, Francis. Yeah. So, um, so, so you said you don't know whether the periodical function is zero. So it has to do with some vanishing property, right? I mean, you know that it satisfies an interpolation property, right? In both yeah, cases. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. The, what is not known is whether you have some weight where the L series does not vanish. Is this the issue? Yeah, yeah. The issue is similar to what happens in Batsal. So Batsal okay. would interpolate the uh, the periodical function that he considers would interpolate. Uh, so he put. You look at a modular form, base change to K, mm -hmm. and uh, you put you made some root number hypothesis that make the, the sign the functional equation to be plus one. Mm -hmm. And then now you look at the center and you twist by antisytomic characters. Mm -hmm. Now, if the conduct, so say of conductor of prime to the left of F. So now all these, all these twists, you have this infinite collection of twists, mm -hmm. all this, the signs in the functional equation are always plus one. So you mm -hmm. expect the value of the center to be non-zero, mm -hmm. but uh, it was until Batsal that one, before Batsal, one didn't know that, certainly it was expected that uh, many of these central values were non-zero, but yeah, it, it was after Batsal's work that, that one knew that. So here the situation is similar. We have all this, uh, we can build, so if I go back here, uh, yeah, so, this or maybe here, we can view these these central values as being we are looking at this B Z tensor B H and we twist by antisytomic characters. Okay, so for every such K prime we have this central value, and yes, the, the problem is that we don't know how to prove that this that there is some uh, K prime for which this L value doesn't vanish. And and even in the symmetric. A power case it's it's not known or is it known in this case i'm not sure if it's known in that case okay yeah in the sims in the case in that case i don't know I, my guess is that it's not known either uh maybe in some very degenerate case when one takes g to be also cn then then uh, probably one is in good shape but if g is non cn uh i wouldn't i would expect it's probably not known Okay, thank you. How, how strong is your big image restriction? Is it, is it supposed to hold when F is not equal to G and G is not equal to H? Is, is well, it's a bit uh, more stringent than that. So we know we need G to be not a, uh, a conjugate twist of H. Okay. So, uh, so certainly we cannot take G equal to H, but also a twist of that doesn't work. But uh, on the other hand, if so given G and H, uh, uh, we, we can show that it, it calls for a de positive uh, density set of primes p. So uh, we give actually precise conditions on, on p that guarantee this big image hypothesis, and uh, yeah, the, the conditions uh, allow for a positive proportion of primes p. Okay, Is there no more questions? We can thank the speaker again.